I believe the key to everything is practice and also understand what you're doing. The more you do something, the easier it gets. And this in a way applied to my sheep painting. Hello and welcome. My name is Charlembos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. And in today's video, I am going to show you how I finished the sheep in this painting. Some from beginning to end, but for the most part at the very end, I'll be focusing on touch-ups and highlights. And so you have a better understanding of what I'm painting. I'm going to show you my reference photos for each scene. That way you have an idea of what I'm working with and how I paint it. If you find the thing of me showing the reference photo helpful, let me know. It does take some time to implement it into the video. Also, hopefully this video helps you have a better understanding of not just how to paint sheep, but fur in general, whether it's straight, curly, or puffy, or matted. Anyhow, let's get started. When painting the sheep, I don't just focus on one at a time. I also pay attention to the neighboring ones as well, particularly the edges. The idea is to establish a sense of order among the sheep and which ones are in front and which ones are behind. And soft edges help push things back and hard ones forward. An example of this is bright white sharp hair on top of softer dark hair of a sheep that's behind. This is something I do throughout the painting to help establish a sense of depth and distance even among the sheep. Even for the face of this little sheep here, edges play a very important role to help make certain things stand out more than others, such as the eyelids and ears having a sense of volume and giving them the illusion that they're sticking out on a 2D surface. Lights and darks play a very important role to establish a sense of volume for these sheep and also the depth of their hair. So before I go into lots of detail, I lay out darks and lights, not only to establish their volume, but also the depth of their hair. There are grooves and some separation. There are crevices and patches of hair that I try to depict will help establish that, especially having soft edges more in the areas that are deep and sharper ones more on the top and surface of the hair. Probably the hardest part about painting the sheep were the faces. Just like the bodies, I don't go in too much detail right away. I just kind of lay out where the eyes and ears will be initially and try to plant them in the right spot. Some hair can always be off by little, but failing to establish the face correctly will show in a bad way in the end. So laying out the groundworks prior to detail is very important. And don't be afraid to make a mistake because you can always correct it. And believe me, I made lots of mistakes and corrected as I went. Even though they were the easiest to do, I still paid attention to the volume of the sheep that had no heads sticking out. They do appear like giant fur balls, but there are lots of little details that I've tried to capture. And once again, I used lights and darks to not only establish a sense of volume, but also a separation among the sheep. And of course, edges to help establish the illusion of one sheep being in front of the other. As for the legs, they were a little bit tricky, not because they were hard to paint, but because I had to be very conscious of the grass. So one thing I did do is paint the grass first, the legs afterwards, and then some grass at the very end right in front of them. To sum up some of the techniques that I used to paint the fur of the sheep or lay out some colors of lights and darks and try to establish the volume and then build upon it hair. But to make it more believable that this is sheep hair, I tried capturing the imperfections that the sheep had, which were stray little hairs and it appeared that they were matted a little bit too. They weren't your typical perfect fluffy sheep that you see in cartoons. They look like sheep that might have been in the rain or rolling in the dirt. Another thing that I would do is go back 
between each hair in some scenarios and apply some darks. The idea is to boost the contrast to make certain ones stick out more, such as individual hairs or the division and separation among the sheep's hair. Something I find helpful is to think like a sculptor when painting and to render something in 3D instead of just paint what you see. If you notice, I've been applying lights, but I have not gone super bright just yet. The highlights and brighter colors will come more towards the end on the final layer of the sheep's hair. Something I find very helpful for the beginning foundations is to work wet on wet. It's a lot easier to get a nice soft blurry effect by applying a body of color like this dark here on the sheep and then lines of hair over it while the paint is still wet. It's easier to blur in this situation and as your brushwork is cutting through the wet paint, it's giving it actually a kind of nice smooth effect that you cannot get if the paint is dry. So take advantage of the early stages of the oil being wet to get the effect of softer hairs. And then when the paint is dry towards the end, apply more of the sharper lines and details. You have to experiment with all types of brushes and learn how to take advantage of the benefits of the paint being wet and also when it's dry. The more hair you paint, you will become better at handling the paint and brushwork and painting hair will become almost like second nature. Pretty much this comes from the experience of learning how to control paint. Painting is after all a constant learning experience and I am still learning as well. In a way, to get the illusion of hair or fur, you might have to build multiple layers of line work, one after the other. But ideally, but not necessary, is to hold off on the lights and the very bright highlights until the very end. And the more I progress in the painting, I go brighter and brighter with the highlights. But applying some darks also helps in boosting the contrast especially if you want specific areas to stand out more. To get a nice illusion of hair, you need to have the illusion of multiple layers. So in a way, build multiple layers of hairs from a blurry soft edge foundation to the final layer where you have lots of highlights and individual hair strands that stand out. Highlights are also very important in order to help define a sheep's head. Whether it is to define their eye sockets or nose or crevices in their overall skull, they help define the edges that stand out versus the ones that are more subtle. They are also very useful to make certain things like ears and individual strands of hair also stick out from the rest of the head. But don't go crazy with highlights and just make it look like there's a lot of outlines everywhere. Use them very carefully particularly where a light source is hidden them, like the sun in my painting. Something I was doing the further I was getting into my painting was paying more attention to the detail of the hair, particularly trying to boost certain ones to stand out more. So I was constantly painting between hairs with some darks in order to have the lighter ones stand out. I was not copying the photo 100%, but I was trying to mimic what I saw and give the impression of each sheep's distinctive hairstyle. Some were more curly than others, and some had actually straight hair, and some were just young lambs and had short hair, while others were older and were more puffy. But each sheep had a distinctive look to them, and I treated them in a way almost differently from each other. But the overall process was the same. Apply bodies of color, work multiple layers of line work, particularly soft layers of their undercoat, followed with sharper line work of their top coat. And of course, everything in between. Of all the sheep, this one was the hardest to paint, particularly because in the reference photos I took, he was always blurry. I was even debating on removing him completely and just painting more grass. But I felt his role in the painting was very important because in a way, instead of being up in the front and very proud like the pack leader, 
he was kind of being shy and to the side. But in order to capture him in the painting, I had to invent the hair a little bit and I used the pack leader's features in a way to detail his face. But I left him a little blurry still. One of my artist friends actually complimented this sheep and said he was his favorite because he looked like he was in motion. So in the end, I was very happy that I attempted to paint him, despite how horrible he appeared in the reference photo. After painting so many other sheep, it was very easy in a way to invent his hair. For the rest of the video, you will notice I am going back into each sheep to further detail, but also to apply touch-ups and highlights. This was the final stage of the painting, or at least for the sheep. One of the things I did is I hung the painting in my living room and I stared at it for some time and then I tried to figure out what needed to be done in order to finish it and I came to the conclusion I needed to go back into some of the sheep and just touch them up give them some highlights and correct some little features here and there whether it's their hair their face or legs or even maybe some grass that would be in front of them I wasn't 100% satisfied so I knew I needed to put in some more work. But the biggest thing I wanted to capture on the last run to emphasize on the glowing light I saw. So once again, I will mention highlights, particularly the peachy ones, because in the end, when I paint the sky, I wanted to give the illusion that the sheep are basking in the orange glow of the sun. Also, an important note is since this was going to be my final run, it was okay to go thicker. It's always a really good idea to give highlights a nice physical presence. So when people stare at your painting and the light hits the little paint that sticks out a little bit, the highlights will appear even brighter. This will also, in a way, further enhance the illusion of texture like the hair, but also make things stick out like the ears, nose, and maybe like the top of the eye sockets of the sheep or particular edges that shape out the skull of their heads. But always say physical texture, even if it's a little bit elevated for the very end, because the idea is to go thin to thick. Because if you do thin over thick, there's a chance that the paint will show some cracking in the future. Yes, painting fur can be very tedious, but it is easy. It just requires a lot of work and practice, of course. And I was willing to spend the time and dedication to do it. Depends on you on what level of detail you want to go, because you could always just have a very vague impression of hair, which is okay. But I was going for illusionism. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, let me know and that you found value as well. Once again, my name is Charlembos. I go by Bob and I'm not your typical painter. Oh, and check out my Instagram, not your typical painter of course, for more of my finished work. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.